Hey guys, it's Thursday, so you know what that time it is. It's time for On Social, the show that talks about everything that has to do with live professional video on social media, marketing, all that good stuff. And I am joined by my co-host. We've got Mr. Jeffrey Fitzgerald from jeffandhighdef.tv. Welcome, sir. Hey, always awesome to be part of the, the gang here. I know Marty uh, is unavailable this week. Uh, he's certainly healthy, nothing like that, but he's not with us, right? No, no, it's just you and I today because uh, Marty, just like the rest of us, right, we've all been inundated with uh, tons of work uh, due to the new norm. And, um, you know, it's it's great to see that people still tune in and, and we want to bring some value. And, and last week we had a lot, Jeff, we had a lot of views on last week's video, a lot of great questions on the chroma key. And we decided to do a part two to this this scenario because I think everybody thinks that there's only one way to use a green screen and maybe some ways that people haven't thought about to use a green screen. And I, we're going to give some tips on that. I want to let you know, Jeff also did a really, really cool Wirecast tip video for this week. It has to do with stinger transitions. If you're wondering what a stinger transition is, you want to know how to do it. You want to stick around later in the program as uh, Jeff, you have a really good work flow, I should say on, on how to do that. Right. Yeah, yeah, you know, in the in the Wirecast users uh, forum, somebody was asking about, and they were a little frustrated, rightly so, that they were having trouble figuring out how to do it. And so what I did is I put together a real quick little uh, uh, work uh, demo of what that looks like, and uh, we can certainly take uh, take your questions and, and go from there. And uh, you know, Steve, the more I'm thinking about it, I am beginning to think that Marty might be in a band, like a <laughs> maybe a Flock of Eagles band. Because he's he's always busy, and then on top of that, he's really busy now, which we know live streaming. A lot of people in the live stream community and the production community are working a lot of overtime uh, to to help with uh, everything going on. But um, we'll we'll make up for it the best we can. Absolutely. So one of the things that we talked about last week, and just to kind of recap real quick, we talked about putting a green screen up behind you. You know, Jeff has one. If you missed that show, go back and watch it. Jeff walks us through his studio setup. Now I kind of let the cat out of the bag last week. And I said, I don't have a green screen behind me. I actually use a TV and people were amazed at the fact that there is a way besides using a green screen to do that. Well, a lot of people don't have studios like we do, and they're forced into an environment where now they have to do a lot of this stuff at home. What are different ways that they can do it? And Jeff, one of the innovative ways that I thought, and I've used this in my, my own scenario, I've done it with Jeff Adams is Taking a picture frame, and I'm going to show that here. Taking a picture frame and putting a, a piece of green construction paper in it or a piece of green fabric, if you have it. So now I have to adjust this because I, in order to keep this in there, I didn't staple it in because it's my daughter's construction paper. She's like, don't ruin it. I need it. Um, so I left the glass in it. But what I want to show you is you could leave this up and put, with Wirecast, you could put a person inside that screen. Now, I'm not going to put a person in there. All I'm going to do is I'm gonna I'm just gonna simply key it out. So watch. Just that simple. You know, obviously if there wasn't glass on it, you could get a really clean key. But the point is you could set this up in your back uh, on a shelf or something and have your guests on it. You could you could have like a really big frame. If some of you guys are are good in woodworking, you could you could easily set this up and make a giant frame and and put it put a um a green screen in it, if you will. Um, this is something that we found handy because one of the things that Jeff wanted on this is he wanted the ability to have like a, a, a rotating uh, marquee, if you will. He had a bunch of advertisers that he wanted and he wanted that to rotate on that, but he had a real set. He had like a wooden back, backdrop and everything like that. So he didn't want to incorporate the whole green screen and, and, and make it effect. He wanted to take... Uh, just a, an element of it. And I've even done stuff with like comic book style and, and video game style stuff where I've taken and I can't pull it off the wall, unfortunately, but I have a fake brick wall muslin on the wall and I put a green screen behind it and I cut the center out that looks like it blew out like from a bomb. And so sometimes when my son does videos, I can make that and have it looks like the city through it so you can look through the wall. There's different innovative ways, uh, and Jeff, I'm sure in your TV production history, you can talk on that. There's many ways of using real stuff with green screen in your shot, sure. not go total green, right? 
Yeah, I mean, you know, the, the, the whole idea for having a chroma key to have the ability to um, sit in front of, you know, the, the magic of being able to remove this color, and replace it with whatever you want, opens up an entire world. And, and it really, it all depends on what you're looking for. If you're looking to do something where you want to plant yourself into another shot uh, fairly simply, we all know that that's really the primary use for it and that you're not trying to look, you know, um, perfect in terms of, you know, it looking like you're really outside or, or things like that. But you can do those kind of things. Um, you know, today I was actually part of uh, PTC Optics. Uh, they had a worship summit and I wanted to have a, a church background. And so, you know, I picked, uh, I think I have it up over here. I had, uh, I just decided I wanted to make it look like I was in a, uh, you know, kind of in a bigger setting a little bit. And so I, you know, I, I picked a different background. Very simple. Every day, everybody knows it's the duh example of Chroma King. You can change the backgrounds. But the the, the uh, flexibility and the functionality about it uh, are incredibly um, resourceful when you want to do something different. And from there, just the basic setup of having the ability to do it, then you can get into things like um, finding on video blocks or Pond5 or any of these stock uh, websites uh, for stock footage, um, backgrounds and cityscapes, uh, things that you may want to you know incorporate into your own look and put them into Adobe Premiere or Final Cut and make them a loopable background. And then uh, from there, there's another level of that where you can even begin to try to model your light to maybe look the same way. For instance, if you had a, a late afternoon look for uh, a cityscape and you were doing kind of a Friday after five uh, kind of a thing, you could um, warm your lights up to a more orange look if you have the ones with the dial on them or put an orange gel in front of them, move them to one side to where it's kind of the same uh, stark lighting kind of coming the way the sunlight would. And you can begin to get a little bit more of a reality uh, look to it. Again, it's a lot more work to do it to where it's like nobody would ever really know, but people kind of buy into the uh, suspended uh, reality of things. You know, they know what you're trying to pull off and they're like, hey, that's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, chroma key uh, is um, not difficult, but it's definitely the kind of thing that if you don't pay attention to it, it can definitely eat up a lot of your time trying to figure out what went wrong. You know, again, smooth backgrounds, good lighting and those things. And then at that point, it's just how do you want to be creative with it? Yeah, I mean, and what he brought up about uh, video blocks and and things like that. Wirecast actually has that built in too. So you can get all kinds of graphics, lower thirds, all kinds of cool stuff. I mean, we've grabbed uh, some loops. I've grabbed some stuff from, from the stock media. So that's, that's built in to get you some cool backgrounds. But um, I borrowed something else from my son for another demonstration of, of ways to do this. So if you guys remember last week, Marty had brought up when he zoomed out of his camera, he had like a whole mess on his table. And I don't, and I don't mean mess in a bad way. He had all his work utilities. He had his, you know, wires and things like that on his desk. And, and when that's why he's, he zooms in so far. Right. So one of the other use cases is something that I borrowed from my son. And that is taking something like this. And you're like, well, what's so special about this? Well, this is his invisibility cloak. Okay. He got one of these, um, <laughs> and it comes with an app for the iPhone. So you wear it normally like this, but if you look on the back, it's a green screen. So what this will do is this will allow him to disappear, so to speak, inside of this. So he can chroma key himself in the app, make himself disappear. So why am I bringing this up? So if I turn this completely inside out, it's now a black piece. It's a cloak. Um, you can lay a piece of green fabric over top of the junk, we'll call it junk, that's on your desk, if that's your work area. Let's say you're you're sharing that with um, your, your spouse or whatever, and you, now you're working at home, you need to have a real clean video solution, but you can't take anything away because, well, I know if my wife came down here and started moving stuff, I'd be pretty upset, right? So you could get yourself a piece of green fabric, lay it over your stuff, and just like that, we can hide it. So if I was wearing a shirt that maybe I didn't want people to see the graphic on it, I can just wrap this around me, you know, in a way that kind of gives it like I'm wearing a black shirt and I could do the show and, and continue to do the show and nobody's the wiser. So these are, these are different ways that you can use the chroma key technology to your advantage. Um, I've done this many times when I've, Jeff, I put, I've taken products and I've set, them, I've set them on bar stools, and I've taken the green chroma key uh, cloth, 
and I'll, here I'll turn the key off of it. And I laid it over top of the bar stool and stuck the product on a lazy Susan that was sitting on top of a green screen so I could spin the product and film it and basically make that stool invisible. And these are, these are very inexpensive. You don't have to use the invisibility cloak, but my green screens are tacked to my wall. So <laughs> I couldn't exactly get it off to, to show you guys. So thanks to my son for letting me use his uh, invisibility cloak. But I think people get the idea where you can you can use that to hide things in your own right. living room studio, right? Yeah, that's right. You know, it's actually I was earlier today looking for I have a three or four foot piece of green fabric and I have uh, to the right of me, I've got the neural net system and a couple monitors. And well, my wide shot, you know, without the the lower third, uh, I have a a uh, a part of my desk that shows and I was thinking, Oh, I wanted to hide that. Uh, and usually what I'll do is I'll just throw it over it and it kind of magically goes away. And uh, yeah, I know if you've ever seen anything funny, um, if you get on YouTube, you can look at uh, weatherman and people in the news who mistakenly know better, but they'll wear the color green <laughs> and uh, they'll walk out to do the weather and it's just their head floating, you know, that kind of thing. Um, but the, you know, from a creative standpoint, you know, I almost like, think it's important to work backward rather than saying, Oh, I've got it. What am I going to do with it? You know, envision why you want one in the first place, right? Because uh, your TV, I think, is a brilliant idea. And especially in the day that we're living in now, where 4K UHD TVs on the magnitude of 75, 85 inches are now under $2,000, under $1,000 for 65, those kind of things. There is a definite value to the thought that that might be the way that you want to go because you don't have to worry about the lighting being perfect and, you, and, and all of the the green, one of the things in, in green uh, screen chroma key world you deal with is that the closer you are and the more light that's hitting the back wall, you'll get a green line around you because the light is, the color is reflecting back on your shoulders. And so you have to use um, tools and certain software that have it where you can do like the, make the green gray and make it blend in better and things like that. But um, there, there's definitely an advantage in doing it with a, with a monitor in a lot of ways. The hook there is you have to have a way to drive that picture on the screen behind you and, uh, you know, in, in the way that you want. And then from there, how are you going to use it in tandem with what you're doing? If you're working with Wirecast and you're switching, there's things you can do there. Um, so, the, you know, the, the, the thinking gets a little bit more um, uh, detailed, but it's certainly something that can be done. But again, whether it's chroma key or whether it's just a big TV or whether it's just you in front of your, your bedroom door, what is it you're trying to do in your videos that is, um, important to you and how do you want to communicate it? And when you think of it that way, then the tools begin to be, make more sense as you think about them, because, you know, I do this all the time. We see stuff somebody's got and you're like, Oh my gosh, that would be really cool. And you're like, you know, and then you really step back soberly, think about it. And you're like, I don't really need it. It's just cool. Right. So, you know, just know why you want to do the things you want to do and things will get a lot better there. No, I, I would agree with that. And, uh, one of the things that we're going to show you guys is not next week because next week there won't be a show. I'm going to be out of the office the whole week. It takes much needed time off, but the following week on, on social, I'm going to put together a, a setup where you're forced to do a meeting, a live stream from your living room, because that's the days that we're in right now. And I want to show you the improper techniques versus the proper techniques of setting that up, whether you're using green screen or whether you're just using things in your living room to make yourself look that much better without spending any money. And that's the big, that was the big thing today, the takeaway. You know, a lot of you guys look at this and you go, wow, you know, I just, I just don't have the budget right now. A lot of people, you don't have the cash. That's where this comes in. You, some of you guys, you have picture frames. You got old picture frames that you're not using. You could set it up and have your guests on different picture frames. You could, you can, Take poster frames, Jeff. We've used poster frames. Um, you could do anything like that and make yourself a fake TV behind you, or, or you know, get some wood at a, a at a Home Depot and spend under ten dollars, and you can make yourself a nice little frame, staple the fabric to it, pulls it nice and 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 uh, straight and and flat, and uh, you can have yourself a really nice visual with doing that. And I, I see you're yeah, in the Capitol right now. Yeah. And that's one of the things I was going to, I, I found, I was looking for a video that might illustrate some things about, you know, picking your backgrounds. Rule number one, we don't want it to move. Right. I mean, you can see what, what that looks like. Um, so when you begin to think about how, what you want to do and how you want to portray that, you got to really think about it. That's almost getting a little annoying here. Um, 
and I'll go back over here to where uh, maybe we can get back to everyday life. Um, but, um, but the other thing is, is that you want to be able to match the, 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 like I said, the lighting sometimes, uh, to give you a little bit better look. And it just depends on, you know, um, if you're, if you're trying to do an interior, which a lot of people do, they, they like that nice little YouTube background with, you know, the led lights and things, but you're in an apartment, what do you do? Um, there's a gal, one of the, the, the top voices on Facebook for Facebook ads, Amanda Robinson. Um, you know, I, um, uh, got in touch with her, uh, two years ago. Uh, after watching one of her live streams and she had this beautiful um, like lake background, I think it was mountains and lakes and everything. And I was uh, saying, Hey, that looks really nice, you know, but it looks like you're doing this or that or whatever. And it turned out she had a full frame picture, like a fabric a display for this pr particular visual. So wherever she traveled, because she's a traveler, likes to, you know, get on the road a lot, she could have the same look anywhere and not have to worry about all the the other mechanics of the lighting and things like that. So there's a million different ways to get the look that you want. But again, I think the bigger thing is, is that what are you trying to communicate and why are you trying to communicate it? Because that will dictate what that should look like. No, absolutely. I agree. And, and you know, there's a good there's a good tip in the chat room, which I agree um, from uh, David in, in Facebook. He says, tip of the week, call your insurance agent and get your streaming studio insured. He said he just did that. Um, uh, for the replacement value, he said he just did that last week and it didn't cost that much. David, I'm glad you brought that up. That's a really good point with all this. Um, if you are spending the money, even whether you have a small setup or a, a big setup, that's a great point to bring up. I actually did that. I have a rider on my insurance. Every year I call the insurance company. They come in. They film. If you've ever seen my studio, uh, they come in here with video cameras. They don't take pictures. They take video. And I go over everything. It's like doing a studio tour. And I have a separate policy or a separate rider on the policy in case something happens. And anytime I update new equipment, I have to take pictures of it, send it to them, and they put it in the file. So that's a really good point. Um, it is. But but Jeff, I think um, with with all this, like you said, knowing your purpose, know why you want to use. You're 100 percent right. Well, know why you want to use a green screen. Don't just do it because somebody says it's cool. But you can see even with the glass on here, I'm getting reflections off the light. You don't want to put the glass in the picture frame. I just did that, again, just to keep it flat. This is not a permanent setup. This is actually, a, my wife would shoot me if I used this for something else because it had uh, her diploma in it. So she would not be happy. Don't tell her that. Um, <laughs> so so I, I had to leave the glass in it. I had yeah, you to, might want to keep her this week from watching anything on Facebook. <laughs> She's going to be like, what? Where did you put my diploma? And, and it's safe. It's safe. It's laying on my desk. It'll go in right after the show. But my point is, you see a lot of these guys, right, where they'll do guests kind of behind them. Like, they'll do four of them in what looks like quadrant TVs. Yep. This is a great way to minimize that. Nobody wants to spend a lot of money, but they want some innovation. How hard would it be to, to nail this to a two-by-four and make, like, a little stand and set it up, right? It's not hard. What? And it depends on what, what it depends on what your, you know, your, your vibe is, right? If you want to do the physical set, Jeff Adams is where this originated from. Jeff is somebody who's incredible. He's got his own studio, his own look within a studio. Everybody knows the, the set that's Jeff's no matter where he's at. It's the wood look. It's got a very cool um, uh, vibe to it. Um, and so in that setting, that physical uh, uh, green cutout was important in there. You can also do the same thing using Photoshop, you know, using After Effects. You can build these. Um, other pieces. And while a lot of times, you know, we're doing overlays and we're not keying with it, in theory, you can kind of do the same thing. You can do Luma keys, you can do alpha channel keys, things like that. Um, but, you know, I think that, um, you know, one of the questions here, uh, Marino is asking about how are we blurring our backgrounds? Um, this was a, uh, this was actually originally part of a, uh, a stock loop background that I found uh, on Pond 5, but it was uh, it was of an, a corporate office and it had like a bike in the background that's still there uh, and a table and things. And what I did is I put it into Adobe After Effects, added a blur to it, and there's different types of blurs. Um, the Gaussian blur is the one that's the fastest, but it's also the one that I think looks kind of the most fake in terms of what blurs look like. Yeah, I added a camera blur, which is what that's called. And you can play with the settings and see kind of what begins to look right. Some of the mistakes with backgrounds when you're doing the blur is you either, and I think everybody does this at one time or another, you over blur it to the point where you're thinking, wow, that's going to set me off where I'm in the foreground and everything behind me is blurry. But if you're looking for something that has a little bit more real look, this here is even way too much in a lot of ways. 
So it really just depends. I, to me, it had some distracting elements to it, but I thought it was a nice color hue and, and things like that. So I, I you know, blurred it a little bit more, but I'm using uh, Adobe Photoshop uh, or After Effects. You can also do the same thing in Adobe Premiere. I know Final Cut will do the same thing. Pretty much any uh, audio or, or, excuse me, video or photo editor will let you do that kind of thing. And then obviously you save it out and you load it in and make sure it's a loop. And from here, I think this is even a still frame uh, from what was a movie at one time right. because there wasn't a lot of movement in it. And it was like, why uh, add the resources to to wire uh, cast or vmix or whatever you're using? Um, just uh, you know, be smart about it too, and uh, and it works. Well, one of the things too with that, um, he he mentioned about that. I actually on the very first episode of On Social, if you go to the uh, the Telstream Vimeo channel or the YouTube channel, I actually walked through how to blur a motion video like Jeff had on earlier. You had the the Capitol building. I actually show you in, I think it's iMovie that I show you how to do it if you have a Mac. But I like there's other, like he said, the Adobe suite will allow you to do it. If you go back and check that out, you can you can actually see how to do a blurred video. I showed it in episode one. That's when I learned I needed a co-host because I couldn't do everything myself <laughs> and switch yeah. the show. Um, but yes, one of the things we've talked about a lot here, and, and you guys have seen it in the last couple of shows, is Wirecast, right? We use it here, we show it, we, we we promote it, we use it, we use the Wirecast gear here. You guys can head over to telestream.net slash on social. You can check out the brand new Wirecast gear. I know a lot of you guys have been checking this out. Um, this is a fantastic piece of hardware. I have it here in the studio. It's one of the pieces of gear that we're using to bring you this, this show. Um, there's also, if you don't have the budget for that, there's also the software Wirecast. You can come up here under products go to Wirecast. There's a free trial, Wirecast Studio and Pro. You can set this up and without spending a lot of money, get the same type of effect we're talking about right now. You can use Wirecast in your living room and we're going to show you that over the next couple of weeks. How to use it for Mac or PC. You can get out there and, and make your production come to life without spending a ton of money, but getting the awesome results that Wirecast has to offer. So, you know, we thank Telstream for allowing us to do the show and bring this to you guys every week uh, with that. But it, but there's real easy chroma key options, just like you saw what I did earlier. I just hit a button, boom, and it chroma keyed it out. Now, granted, with the glass on it, with the lights, I have to fine tune it. But you, you guys got the idea. You figured, you know, you saw how it works. So, Jeff, I think that that uh, I think that's a great viable solution. And I think, speaking of Wirecast, I think we need to show your tip to show people how to do these stinger transitions and they're going to be jealous by your your sports background here that you got going on. So let's take a look at that. So here, this is uh, some material from a show I did in 2018 uh, on Facebook Watch for a uh, national league called the A7FL. And I've got myself chroma keyed as your host over here uh, in the studio in the 3D set that I built. And in the other layer shot, I've got the highlight footage we want to roll to. So let me show you how easy it is to actually do a Stinger transition. So I'm going to go up to the switch menu, come down to manage Stinger transitions, click that. And this opens up a dialog. And so I'm going to hit the plus. This is where we're going to load our media. Uh, so I've got uh, one of the transitions here. I'm going to click open. And if I take the playhead and I begin moving it back and forth, you can begin to see what it does. This was made in After Effects. And like every great Stinger transition, there's got to be a spot where it is completely closed because you want to be able to change the video at that point. If I let go and I come over here to the AB uh, switch here, the uh, click to set the end point, uh, I click that. And now you see the two color uh, changes here. One is still the, the uh, vanilla uh, cream and the other one is the purple. This is where that shot at this point on this frame, this is where that is going to make that change from video A to video B back and forth. So we're done. I'm going to hit close. And now all I have to do is actually assign it into the transitions that we're using back on the main layer. So I come into the transitions window. I come down to the very bottom. That's the stinger transition that I've got listed. And now uh, I'm here. Welcome to another great uh, show. Here's the highlights we're going to talk about. I've got my transition queued up for that. You hit the button and wham, what do you know? We've got an A7FL highlight. They're arguing with the ref. Here's a great pass coming out of the backfield. This pass is thrown. Uh, we'll watch this. Great pass. And then he's out. And so I'm going to hit the button and we come right back. And there's your stinger transition. So you can see by hitting this button, 
I can hit it as many times as I want to go back and forth. It is seamless and it is painless. And the way this works is this is an alpha channel created file. Uh, I use After Effects to do that with. And uh, this is where you basically have your, your mat come together and when it goes away, it leaves transparency. So it's actually fairly easy to do in terms of using it within Wirecast. It may be more difficult to understand how to create them, but that's something that there's a number of uh, resources on YouTube to look around and figure out how that works. But I hope this helped. Well, I thought that was really good. I mean, I, I thoroughly enjoyed that. We, Jeff and I were talking during that. And um, Wirecast, actually, if you go into the stock media, if you guys didn't know this, following Jeff's tutorial, type in transition in the stock media library for those of you that have Wirecast, and you'll get a, I mean, a plethora of different transition light bars going across. Um, you, you'll, there's ones that have really eclipto type shapes that spin and you could set it up and use Jeff's tutorial, set those in point and out points. And you can have a really cool transition wipe effect, uh, Jeff, that professional broadcasters use. Yeah. And I think this is one of the, um, kind of one of the hidden gems of, uh, of Wirecast because this is the kind of feature that can really set you apart and make you look a lot more professional in the sports world. Um, you know, the A7FL uses this all the time, and it's a great thing because you have that ability to brand the the in-betweens, right? And when you're cutting away, it's the same thing like the Papa John's Play of the Day or whatever it might be, and it, it gives you a really nice ability. And I did not have um, audio on that that file there, but you can also have the, the uh, audio as part of it, and it would make the whoosh sound or whatever it is you want to do. Uh, there. But uh, yeah, I think it's actually pretty powerful and it, it works really well. David Brewer in the chat room, he even says that you can make uh, these stingers really easily in Telestream screen recording software called ScreenFlow on the Mac. So you can definitely check that out. And um, uh, Fadi, Fadi, F-A-D-I in the chat room, he says, I haven't used Wirecast in such a long time, but can I use my Blackmagic Mini recorder with it? And yes, you can. It is one of the supported devices that work with Wirecast. So yes, absolutely. Go download the trial. It works. Um, great way to capture video. Um, I personally am a fan of the Magewell USB capture devices. Driverless. I don't have to deal with it. I just plug them in. I, yeah. use, them, I use them for my gaming show with two PTZ optics over there. Um, yep. And I, I have great. three of the Magewell, including a 4K. And you're right. They are they're driverless, which which really helps because um, Blackmagic uh, design, I think, makes some incredible uh, hardware. But you have to always stay up on those drivers if you're not careful. So if you're having a problem with it being recognized or you you um, are having other issues with it, go ahead and either update those drivers and see if that will help. And sometimes on a rare occasion, go backward to a driver that was previous if it's not working the way you want and see if maybe it's just uh, not working in your particular system. And Steve, I know, you know, this probably goes without saying, but you can imagine being, um, you know, someone like Telestream or Blackmagic, a big company, trying to give um, resources and, and hardware and software to people who have millions of configurations and hoping that it's going to be pristine on every single one of them. That's a big ask. And so sometimes, you know, you do that work on your own as you, you learn to be your own IT guy, um, you know, rolling back a driver or trying a new one, that kind of thing can actually do a lot and go a long way from uh, you having to, to call up somebody to find out that that's what they would have you do anyway. Yeah, there was a, there was a go-to driver when I worked in support that we used to keep, I think it was 9.2 was the black magic magic driver. Like, if you used any of the other ones, because Blackmagic for the longest time, they put out that if you're running 10 point or higher. Now, this is this was years back. Um, it was mainly for the new devices and the um, the 4K devices, and it wasn't recommended for some of the older uh, devices. But they did say that if it doesn't work, roll it back. Well, like anybody, like we all would have done, right? If there's a new driver, we update. That's what we're taught. But as, right. as broadcasters and, and folks that you're trying to be content creators like you're doing now, my my thinking when it comes to drivers, and this is just my, and I don't know if Jeff agrees with this, but if it's not broke, don't fix it, especially yeah, not before a show. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah, never never do that five minutes before you're going to go live. And, um, you know, and I think that it's like it's like the entire landscape of what live streaming is, even with everything going as good as it can something's going to go wrong somewhere. You just have to be able to overcome it. So why create more problems in the same moment, right? You just, you want to, you want to get out there and put your best foot forward and let the world hear your message and see what you're all about and, uh, and go from there. Yeah. And to answer the other question, uh, uh, 
Body says in the chat room, he says, thanks, can I stream to Facebook and YouTube at the same time? You absolutely can, as long as you have the bandwidth available to you. You can you can do that, and that's something we do we do here. Um, just remember, and I think this this is the takeaway from last week's green screening, this week's adding the the the, the different elements, whether you're using a, a frame or you're using a drop cloth that has green on it, just to get rid of some mess that you have on your table, or you're trying to do a product look. Just remember, the more elements that you add, the more complications that you add. You've got to know your stuff. You've got to, as Jeff said, know why you're doing it. Don't just do it just because it looks cool because you're adding more complexity to it, which could bring on more problems that, you know, yeah, that's, that's all I'm saying with that. Right. Yeah. And I, yeah, I mean, I think that's great advice and, you know, I, I would go and say this as well. Obviously, you know, there's so many different use cases. There's so many different levels of, of folk. Um, for some people, this show is going to be extremely like um, low ball because they've done it for a long time. But others are going to be, oh my gosh, this is something I've never thought of. And we're trying to really with our show reach a bigger audience, but but take people where we we are and where we all want to go. And so that's some of what you're kind of seeing here. And if you want to see something specific answered about a green screen, if we can help you with that, would love to do it. Send us a note here in the chat about what it is you'd like to see, because as we go through the next couple of weeks, we can begin to roll some of these in we can pre uh, build some of this stuff but uh it's a little harder during a live show to just uh, say oh let me you know rearrange four or five lights move some things over here we're going to change the color a little bit here because that takes you know a little bit more time could even take the whole half hour but uh, if we know what you want to see and you want to see a demo of it be more than happy to help so absolutely because jeff and i are single producers we don't have a team uh doing everything we're just a, it's a two-man crew this week and it's usually a three-man <laughs> right. crew uh, but yeah, I'm pushing the buttons. I'm switching. I'm hosting. I'm yeah. And Jeff's doing that on his end, looking at comments. So absolutely leave a comment. Um, but we're going to have to wrap things up here, guys. And I, you know, I really appreciate everybody coming out. I hope you like the, the tip. Jeff did a fantastic job. So make sure if you want to connect with Jeff and you've got uh, some questions for him personally, you can go to Jeff and high TV, check him out on LinkedIn. If you look up Jeffrey Fitzgerald, just about anywhere, you'll find him. And uh, hit him up because he does do consulting that if you need help in your studio or you're trying to build a studio, definitely, definitely reach out to Jeff and he could, he'll be your guy. That's right. I would love to help. You guys know that. And, and he's also a, you know, a two-time Emmy award winner. I mean, I, I'm just going to throw that there as the icing on the cake, you know, just well, saying, I just saying. That. Yes, no, I appreciate that. But you know, the thing is, you all know this with with what we're dealing with now currently in in a, in a global sense what are we all realizing the entire world has realized that live streaming and becoming visible online is really where you're going to have that identity that brand authority and um you know i'm i'm working right now with uh, uh some uh gentlemen who were the former lead singers of the temptations the four tops the platters and the drifters and we're going to be doing one of these live from the living room uh concerts in the next couple of weeks and uh, I've been looking for webcams for them and different uh, items I want to outfit them with. And uh, there are no webcams left in America. I can tell you that. I have looked just about everywhere. And uh, we're finding that people have really uh, leveraged the technology now. And so what's going to happen is once we get through this um, disease state, and we will, we'll get through it, um, we're going to find that there are a lot more people doing live streaming for their business, for their brand, for their family, and everything else. And I think that's where the opportunity opens up for you. So this is the moment to get into it, to learn it, to really grasp what you're doing, know your why, and move forward with it because this is only going to um, benefit you for now and in the future. It's going to be incredible for you. Absolutely. Great words of advice. And remember, guys, next week there will be no show. So get your questions, send them in. You can always send them to me. It's stephenh at telestream.net. If it's a video that you want to show, hey, this is my studio setup. How can I improve it? I'm in my living room and I don't know the best course of action. Send it to me. I'll get it over to the guys and we'll showcase it on the show here and kind of pick it apart in a good way and tell you where you can make some changes to benefit your situation and your solution so that you're not spending money. We can help you situate yourself. So remember that. Go subscribe to Telestream's YouTube channels as Wirecast Tube and Telestream Tube. Like us here on Facebook, Telstream Wirecast, and I think there's even a Telstream page that is independent of the Telstream Wirecast, so go lo go like that. We're, we're in the Wirecast users groups that are all over Facebook, so get in that. Um, we're, we're easy to find all over the place, and we love helping out people. 
Guys, we really appreciate you tuning in. Stay tuned in two weeks for another episode of On Social. Until then, have a great week, and we'll see you on the next one.